Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today, and he is an author. His name is Henrik Weninus, and he is an amazing author, and he has written over a series of books that he's going to talk about, and he has been writing for over 20 years now, and he has some amazing tales to tell us, and he has such, such great advice to share. So, Henrik, tell everybody about yourself and what you do. Well, um, I'm a Finnish writer um, uh, now living in uh, in Spain, and um, yeah, like you said, I've, I've been writing now last 20, uh, 20 years, and uh, uh, my most recent books are this series. It's a trilogy, young adult trilogy, and it follows three uh, three young people on the verge of. Uh, or teenagers on the verge of uh, adulthood. And um, it's not only about uh, the, uh, the hardship of being um, young in a normal settings, but I wanted to bring in also the uh, subjects that um, most worry uh, Gen Z or young people. And uh, so in this series, a uh, Hashim, Alex and Mariam, they deal with real life issues like uh, climate change, animal rights, uh, gender and racial equity. And um, one uh, kind of a, a important line through this series is that how we can make the change ourselves. In other words, being activists and, uh, and it the starts in the series, a very small, and it grows and grows until it reaches global, uh, global audience and global range. So, so um, I think that uh, I just recently read, and I read many times that that, uh, for example, climate change is is like the one of the things that the uh, Gen Z are most worried about uh, if we talk about uh, uh, you know the uh, the uh, things that uh, threaten their future and and also uh, animal rights and are very important thing I think like seventy nine percent of the U S Gen Z uh, regularly choose uh, uh, um, uh, non meat. Uh, non-dairy uh, meals. So um, I wanted to bring this whole package and and also uh, not only in drama form but thriller form because the the first part, which uh, which is called Catch You If You Fall, is kind of an introduction to these three characters mm -hmm. and that talks about. Uh, uh, important things in the life before they set out to change the world actually right and one of the big themes here is actually that the two of the main characters um are uh, muslim uh, ha hashim is a closeted uh, uh, gay boy and 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 then there's mariam who is um, a lebanese american um, vegan activist and um, in a small scale at this point, yeah. But, uh, and then there is uh, Alex, who is a Catholic boy dealing with um, uh, hardships uh, in his home life. And and then as a you know we get to know these um, three main characters. Then on the second part, we already burst into more like a thriller form. I, I call it uh, animal rights action thriller, mm -hmm. and uh, and third part we take this all to the global scale. So it's a climate change thriller, yeah. And there we went, go into the real like how to solve this climate change, mm -hmm. you know, with the big action. But uh, yeah. So that's that's like in short um, uh, short description of this uh, trilogy, and it is now available in Amazon, in book form, eBooks, and paperback. And then 
I just finished uh, the uh, audiobook. So um, you can get them audiobooks as audiobooks in all major platforms. But in addition to this, uh, I've been doing for the last couple of months a weekly serialized audiobook podcast. So uh, the name of this trilogy is the Rise Up Trilogy. Um, uh, you can find the Rise Up Trilogy podcast in all major platforms. So you have like one or two characters, 10 to 20 minute um, um, episodes. And um, so you can listen to them for free. Wow. Now, have, did you find any challenges or conflicts while you were writing this book? Did you come across any 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 issues that made it a little difficult for you when you were trying to put all this um, information and all these thoughts into one book? No, well, it was, I, I love the whole process because a lot of it, uh, of course, I have to tell a little backstory here, how I, because it's not usual, and actually it's not advisable for a white man to write about uh, different cultures, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, um, Islam is, is, is very, it, it's it's not, you know, there's been so much misinformation and misrepresentation in the, in the media. So you have to really be knowledgeable before you write about it. But what really set me on this path was I was very young, maybe 11, 12, and I was reading about life of uh, Siddhartha Gautama, also called Buddha. And uh, what I, there are a lot of things that I, understood from him but one very important thing that really changed my life was that it's not interesting how i'm different from the others but mm -hmm. what i have in common and um and that kind of ignited my curiosity to to different cultures and i've been always voracious reader and reading about different cultures and i decided i need to get out of my little bubble yeah. and go out to the big world and at the age of 14 then I then I left uh, uh, to a boarding school near Paris and like in the first week I met this um, uh, I had a classmate a Jewish guy who had been in an um, uh, airplane that was hijacked by some um, um um, Palestinian um, liberation organization, not PLO, but the, some faction of it, mm -hmm. uh, to Entebbe, and then they were freed by the Israeli uh, security forces. And that was what, quite traumatic, of course, to the boy. And then a couple of weeks later, I would go to, I, I went to Paris uh, to visit my mom's friend, and she had a Tunisian boyfriend, and he introduced me to um, the North African Muslim world. Uh -huh. And in, just in a span of a couple of weeks, I was right in the middle of this you know, big uh, conflict, but it's still kind of going on. And I get fascinated by by both yeah. religions, actually. And then and later on, I spent a lot of time in Tunisia and I, I've always been kind of keen uh, to um, study more, but it's it's not only Islam. I, I'm interested in everything I, and everything, and I've gone through Zen Buddhist training. I've been doing Ashtanga Yoga for 25 years, wow. and all these kind of uh, um, spiritual traditions uh, uh, have always had a great attraction to me. Mm -hmm. So, so this is, and now I kind of pour all my understanding of the world into this um into these books and one of the big inspiration for me was also that uh, for 15 years I, I was a volunteer mm -hmm. in the red cross youth shelter in helsinki and uh, there we had a lot of uh, immigrants from a lot also of course from the um muslim world and and it kind of but what amazed me was that, you know, how smart they were yeah. and wise. 
because I think we kind of uh, uh, start as we grow, we start to kind of get deluded yeah. in our uh, natural wisdom, what we have had when we were born to this world. And, mm -hmm. and with all the conflicts of, you know, expectations and uh, you know, facing, you know, our, our identity and all of this thing and, and, so I wanted to kind of write this also as a reminder of what we, what uh, older people seem to easily forget that how much wisdom and 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 strength and force there is in the young generation. Yes, definitely. Wow, that's very powerful. Now you have a lot of different characters in your book. Now with the characters that you've written in your book. Is there a specific kind of a topic, like a specific message that you're trying to get through? Because you have you 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 have you you have a couple of different really great points. You, you know, you're looking at the, the 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 Z generation, and you're seeing what's going on, what issues they're 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 challenged with, and how did you incorporate that all into the book? Like, was there a specific message that you were trying to get across when you started writing this, this series? Actually, I I tried to ha not have any agenda. It okay. was more like because I myself, I mean, I've been vegan now for uh, ten years, and before that, I was twenty five years. I was vegetarian, and all these issues like climate change and animal rights and 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 gender and 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 racial equity. They are all issues uh, that I always been interested in. And I'm, I'm before becoming kind of a vegan activist, I was a LGBTQ plus activist. I, I used to go to schools and summer camps and talk about these issues. And so, um, yeah, it's uh, I, it was more like um, like I. It's like a good actor to, although of course it's a little bit too much to say that I'm a good writer, but, but, but I use the same method what many of the actors do, that you become the person. Yes. And uh, and I have to say that the Mariam was the hardest one for me because she was, she was dealing with so different um, problems from my sphere of things. So I, it took me a little while, but then she, I really, really found her in kind of, and, and I could, and, and for me, it is, it's the, the whole, the process when I write is very intuitive. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I throw myself there and, and I can, I feel, I hear what they're saying. I can feel their feelings in my body and, and the, the, all the different senses. And I just wrote down that. Yeah. What I was feeling. Of, of course, it was very exhausting in a world, in, yeah. in, in many ways too. But, but that's, I, but for that, I needed also, since, well, I started in this self-discipline exercises when I was 12 and I'm, I'm quite good at it. So over the years so that I know that my limits are, and I'm, um, I believe in routines that help me to stay uh, grounded because it's uh, you know it, it, it is it's it's um, it's it's dangerous could it could be dangerous that if you don't get out of that world and yeah. you, know, you stay in there and, and that's why especially in the past uh, many writers um, took shelter in booths. Mm. But you know, nowadays it's not not possible anymore anymore. Right. But so it seems like you 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 made it into an entertaining story, but yet you took a lot of issues that we're dealing with today and kind of making people aware, and then just putting yeah. yourself into those characters. And you know, basically, it's it's your feelings, it's how you feel about things. But then you create these characters. And then you kind of develop the personality of them. And then you, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, from, it, it kind of came. Of course, I had some, you know, um, got some feelings about them, but they actually, they they came to life, you know, by themselves. And 
And I think the, the, the way I wrote it, that I would first write a film script, because that gave me kind of a flexibility to change things around. And I use quite a lot like script doctors and you know professional people to help me to hone the story yes. so that it was the best it could be. Right. You know, and only then when I had that story like there, yeah, then I I I wrote it out to another form. Actually, it was very uh liberating the feeling to write it out from the script form because of course in script you never write about you know the feelings and the inner thoughts or anything everything have to, has to be very descriptive and you know but that's uh, that's also because i like to be kind of minimalist and not uh, have you know long uh, sentences or long descriptions and in the script the, every word counts you know you have to and they have to be dynamic and yeah so that was a great help in 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 writing the novel too than this knowledge i love it i love it so did you leave every series of the book with a cliffhanger kind of to connect with the and it is it's it's, a, it's sort of you know like I um I didn't I didn't use kind of the I made each story so good that they want to know more. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't have to use cliffhanger. I used cliffhangers in um in you know chapter breaks. Okay. Yes. But I didn't use it. I had like the because um each story is concentrated on like go oh, like the main character is one character always like in the first one it's it's uh Hashim the closeted uh, Muslim boy and then it's Alex and the last one is Miriam so so you know I wanted to make kind of their um character arc complete in that story but then but I always also you know like when when I published the the, the first part then I would always uh, put the, um, the first chapter of the second book there or mm -hmm. the first chapter of the third book. So that would be the cliffhanger, actually, because both uh, both the third, second and third part, they start very, you know, very dynamically. Okay. And so that, you know, just reading two pages, you want to know more. And can you tell us a little bit like the synopsis of what it's about without giving away too much? Well, it's yes, um, it's it's you know it's 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 kind of a it, the the timeline is like maybe two years, and there's a big changes happening in the in the beginning in the first part. They it it's only it take it's like a. Uh, only a couple of days, uh, the timeline there, and it's like the end of summer after high school graduation. And they all like, you know, getting ready to you know, to the next part. Yeah. And, and suddenly, you know, something happens, you know, and uh, things go wrong and they fell off uh, kind of a out of friendship and uh, and yes uh, and and then you know like uh, how do they and then then there's like a time bomb ticking because uh, they are leaving you know their uh, this is this first book takes place in midwest okay in 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 a small town or not small but let's say mid sized town mm -hmm. uh and uh, uh by the lake michigan and and yeah, so the, that's that, and then the second part is is more like okay. Then they they end up in the same place, but through there's a lot of different things has happened, right? And uh, they have become you know kind of more aware of the of the big world and and um, the the uh, animal rights. I mean, Mariam is very good at uh, kind of uh, uh, convincing 
his uh, two best friends, her two best friends said, you know, this is, you know, that, that veganism is something important. And then we go into this uh, food uh, production world. And I, I know it sounds like factory farms, thriller, animal rights, mm -hmm. you know, how do you find, how do you, how do you write a thriller? But, um, but, you know, I just, you know, I don't want to tell more about that, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, just, uh, because if you go into Amazon, you can read like the first uh, five pages of each book, you know, for free, you know, it's, that's the, the, the Amazon thing. Yeah. But just, you know, check it out and, and then you get the idea, you know, right. Uh, how do you like it and if it resonates with you and and or you can listen in, uh, for free in 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 um, any uh, podcast platform so right right wow it sounds very interesting and were there any anything specific some lasting impressions that you wanted to leave with the reader like is it when the reader after they read this book is it just to really make them like just feel like wow you know like you know they read all this it's it's a thriller and it's in a learning experience and the uh, characters kind of seem to like take you away where you could actually put yourself into the character like you created the character and kind of go mm -hmm. to this fantasy world and and have in and, and experience this thriller but is there like like certain lasting impressions like after they put your book down and they read it is there something that you want them to resonate with and some uh, those those you really want them to like really think about and learn from yes i think the the kind of um the if we can say um, the lesson what i would like people to have from this uh from the series is that actually we all can do something about it you know about climate change about animal rights about gender and racial equity and we can all be activists it doesn't mean that you know you have to plant a bomb in the factory farm or, right you know, yeah which is not happening in my books anyway but, but anyway <laughs> you, know, like it's, you know baby steps i believe in you know like uh, that you know just your personal choices and being aware you know talking to your friends being active you know like uh, in um, well if you are a lot in social media there is a lot of interesting discussions a lot of interesting sites and you know you can you know kind of share that uh, information you can take part of it you know telling about your own ideas or your own experiences in all kinds of not only social media with friends uh, you know with the uh, in schools in universities wherever so it's that uh, you know the world won't change in a second so you know like you take it easy and find your own voice and how and they take things that resonate within you you know that's most important because if we try to force something then it usually we don't we cannot get our message through so right. it's it's very important that you know this is it comes from within you know yeah. this uh, desire to make a change well, clearly you could see that you're an activist. So when in your own life, you know, what did you find most effective? Like when, when it comes to advocating for a cause, you know, you see people doing all these different things. Some people are doing productive things. Some people are going overboard. But from your own experience, what do you find to be the most productive way to be an advocate and to actually produce change in the world? Well, you know, of course, there is this large scale thing of, you know, like what I think maybe, you know, writing this book is something that, you know, I can make, you know, change in the big scale. But but anyway, the most, uh, what I get, uh, what I enjoy most is actually one-on-one -on -one discussions and just yeah. talking to people and meeting people. And, you know, that's always been kind of my thing and it, it you know it's uh it it doesn't need to you know be any you know you don't have to 
hammer it in, yeah. you know, just uh, by your own uh, compassion and, mm -hmm. you know, you can just uh, be kind of a beacon of light, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, no virtue signaling, nothing like that, you know, and judge, judge, judging, you know, that never works. So, right. you know, it's uh, it's just kind of use your natural personality, you know, to enhance the message. Oh, I agree. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, if you had to take everything we discussed today. Are there certain things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners that you feel are important between your book, between the principles that you've discussed? Are there things that you want people to keep in mind when they're when they're thinking about your book and when they're thinking about the things you talked about today? Well, I, I think that um, that um, what is what can most benefit the reader is that. You know, when they read about these three characters, is that uh, how 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 does it relate to their own life mm -hmm. and uh, their experiences? And I mean, all three characters have so vastly different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and 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 what is there that you know the, through in their lives in, in the lives of character that you can easily relate to and what are things that you find maybe uncomfortable right because often the things that we find uncomfortable are kind of our sore spots and yeah. they are the usually things that we needs most work right so you know that's that's kind of a it's it's you know, like good reading this you know like you you can kind of um x-ray your own you know own life experience and and mm -hmm. and uh, and find the ways i hope have find the ways to deal with uh, you know deal with pain and um, resentment and rejection and you know all these uh, natural human emotions right and i would i would hope that you know the you know the way that didn't and the main characters have dealt with their problems might give you some kind of clue how to deal with yours. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. I love that a lot. Wow. You know, I, I think it's really important that people understand that positive change, you could be an advocate and, and create positive change in, in a positive way you know, through books, through talking, through interaction in, in, mm. a, in a peaceful way, you know, um, you know, violence is never the answer. Violence is, is just something that, you know, instigates more violence and there's never a constructive solution when people react in, in negative ways. But if we can think of different ways, like your book and communicating with others and inspiring and motivating others to do good, and to maybe change their way of thinking, you know, which it seems like they can get that through your book. You know, they can change the way they think about things and look at things just by reading your book, which I think yeah. is wonderful, you know, because there are so many ways we can cause positive change in this world and, and go in a, in, a, in a positive direction. It's just really revert into good ways of, of making changes and not revert into violence or yelling or screaming or saying, judgmental yeah. things that are hurtful you know because that never works yeah although it happens but yes. the thing is that when it happens then you have a kind of a you can think about it that you don't have to kind of uh, uh, block it off yeah and because these you know my main characters also they get frustrated and yeah. and judgmental and and all that that's actually a natural thing too but the, the thing always is that how you react to that right and if you learn from that but exactly. if you bury it you know nothing will change and you will continue with the same mistakes and yes uh, oh that's so true that's so true I, I love what you talked about today. And, you know, I remind everybody what the title of your book is and where they can find your book. Uh, so um, uh, 
the name of this trilogy is the Rise Up Trilogy. And the three books are the first one, uh, Catch You If You Fall, and the second one, the, the Animal uh, Action Thriller, Animal Rights Action Thriller is called Merry Farm. And the third one, uh, the um, uh, Climate Change Thriller is called Collusion. So you can just um, just try uh, the uh, the Rise Up trilogy, and you find it in uh, in Amazon, and you can find the audio books, and you can find the podcast through that, and um, and also uh, I would like to give uh, to the listeners, you stay and then decide how it's going to be done, but uh, I would like to. I have a giveaway for two sets of uh, Spotify audiobook uh, um, redemption codes. So you will get the whole series and uh, then you can listen to it at your leisure. I think that's wonderful. And we'll put all that information in the description box and hopefully they'll give you a nice big review so everyone else can see how wonderful your books are. I'm very proud of you and your information was very valuable today. I love how you are trying to change the world in a peaceful manner through and and you're making it in a fun way too because it's a thriller book. So it, it's intriguing. You get really into thriller books and you're learning and you're really understanding things from different characters' perspectives, which actually can help change your own perspective. And uh, I so I, I really honor you for doing that, taking the time out to really focus on important matters that are a big but are big issues in today's world and you know that people really need to realize the importance of and yes our our younger generation is is realizing all these things but we also have to have the baby boomers and you know our generation and you know older generations also realize that these issues are are important and they need to really focus on these issues and and come to peaceful solutions that are going to cause you know, positive change. So you're doing that. And I honor you for that. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. And hopefully you can come on and, and talk some more about these topics. Because I think these topics really need to expand. People need to understand why they're important and things that they could do too to help others, you know, and be a part of that, you know, advocating group, you know, to because to, the more people that realize it's important, the more people that join to help, the faster we could see change and the better our world will become. So thank you so much, Henrik, for being a part of this show. And do you have a website before we go that, that people can go on? Yes, um, uh, I have a website. It's uh, very simple. Uh, Henrik Vilenius uh, uh, at gmail.com. No, sorry. That's my... Dot com. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, 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 sorry. I have, yeah, is.com, yeah. Henrik Villeneuve's all together with small letters and, and the dot .com, yeah. And can, and they, old <laughs> <laughs> can they contact you on that website if they want uh, Yes, to? there is, uh, yeah, there is, um, y you can send me a note if you Excellent. decide to. Excellent. Yeah. Now, are you just right now focusing on your writing or do you provide any other services? No, no, this is, uh, this is now what I'm, what I'm, uh, I Put mean, um, yeah. yeah Putting all your say. energy into your writing right now. Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Henrik, for coming on the show. And thank you for everything. You've been a whirlwind of information. I know I said this already, but thank you for all you do. All right. Thank you, Stacy, for having me. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too. All right. <laughs>